Retro Electro Tech <laughs> Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Retro Ernest of Retro Electro Tech. And before I get started, um, I just want to say a few things. I haven't gone uh, completely insane or otherwise senile. The reason why I'm talking so loud is because I have the camera uh, away from me just a little bit. The mic is built into the camera, so I want to make sure everybody can hear me. And uh, also, too, the heater's running in the background. It's pretty cold today and uh, snowing pretty hard and heavy. So let's saddle up and giddy up and uh, get this moving. What I have here on the bench is a Roland Juno 60 synthesizer from uh, the early 80s. Uh, a lot of you know what these are, and a lot of you probably recognized what this was right off the bat. But anyways, um, this is going to be more of a customer update video. I want to bring them up to speed on you know what's going on. Uh, but for those of you who've already jumped on board, as I always say, you're welcome to come along for the ride. So anyways, um, let me just uh, mention too that I, I made an unboxing video when this first came in just to kind of, um, you know, do a little overview, I guess, and uh, that's about it. So the stage that I'm in right now is the servicing of controls, and um, I mentioned before that these uh, VRs here, or uh, sliders, are in rough shape and, you know, they were very, very stiff. This uh, unit was not treated well. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, debris and dirt in here. I haven't even cleaned it off yet. I'm not at that point yet because, you know, I'm flushing off these boards. And by the way, you know, obviously you can see that these boards have been removed from the uh, underside of the... Uh, control panel and um, you know the the bottoms of the boards don't don't look bad I haven't really combed through yet and you know looked at all the traces and everything and solder joints you know under uh, you know a little bit of uh, you know magnification as I always do so anyways um, that's that so we've gone through and flushed these uh, VRs out uh, multiple times and I say we because my apprentice is doing that I've already brought them up to speed on the on the art of uh, servicing controls properly so anyways he performed a multi flush uh, cleaning of these pots so far some of these sliders have responded more favorably than others there's a few that you know are, are a bit stiff and kind of hit a little catch there and and uh you know you got to give them a little tug to bring them down and anyways there's still some that are pretty stiff and that have a really rough feel to them so there is going to be a a percentage of these vrs uh probably several that need to be removed from the board disassembled and cleaned you know in more detail and also to I don't know yet if there's any, uh, you know, anything uh, bent within some of these um, VRs that are still really stiff and some that are catching a little bit, as I mentioned a moment ago. Sometimes when you try to slide these um, VRs, when they're all gunked up like these ones, are slash were some of them I think we flushed out the degraded uh, lubricant within pretty good but some of them are like I said are not responding real well and if you try to um, if you try to move them especially when they're dry when they when they still have contact cleaner in them when you're really flushing them out and you're moving them around you can get away with it a bit more but I guess what I'm trying to say is when the uh, resistive track tracks and the wipers are still wet you can get away with sliding them a bit but once things dry out you don't want to screw around and start trying to slide them and all that um, so I know the customer had this thing powered up he was trying to play around with it 
I'm not uh, finger pointing or pointer pointing at the uh, customer and saying that he damaged anything, but if he was trying to move these around and all that, the little wiper contacts that ride on the uh, resistive tracks could have bent, and that's why I'm experiencing uh, some of these that are kind of catching a bit and not, uh, you know, going down all the way or whatever the case. Um, sometimes, sometimes that's a possibility. I really don't know yet until I open them up and see what's going on. Or if there's just still a bunch of gunk in certain areas of the track, you know, debris, you know, dirt, gunk that accumulates over the years. I don't know if you can see very much detail, but um, you can see how much um, fuzz and crap is all over the boards and there's a lot of that all over and dirt so you know it works its way into the uh, openings here and causes uh, problems and then you got again the original factory lubricant that they uh, lightly smeared on the resistive track to give everything that that nice smooth uh, function and fill and whatnot that degrades and gets all viscous and all that then you add to that the fact that this was stored in a, a non-climate controlled or friendly uh, environment okay so I'm just bringing that out um, because these things are really rough and like I said some of them are probably gonna have to come out and I'm gonna have to dive into them further that equates to more time and as a result uh, higher cost so the customer and I are gonna discuss that when the uh, when the time comes but I wanted to point that out that yeah some of these some of these are moving okay uh, some of these are like up here there's a stiff spot and yeah and it feels kind of grubby kind of rough even despite the fact that I've uh, or my apprentice has flushed them out multiple times and there's yeah this one right here is still still pretty nasty uh, this one is a bit stiff still and uh, you know again this one is kind of hitting a yeah, it hits kind of a a little obstacle there so I don't want to mess around with that then it gets a little bit gritty when I move it back up to the top so forth and so on okay I'm not going to go through everyone on on camera but uh, take my word for it they're they're not uh, all responding favorably to a flush style cleaning like I said they've been flushed out probably three times there comes a, a point where you have to tap out and then uh, make a choice to dive deeper or source some replacements and um, depending on the availability of replacements, I know that, um, you know, they're out there. There's a few places like, uh, you know, Centaur, I believe that's how you pronounce it, that uh, sell replacements. But whether or not they have any in stock, you know, it, it, it fluctuates. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And there's other resources online. Of course, there's the, uh, you know, big auction site. But whatever the case. Um, you know, if I have to source some replacements, then it is what it is. And you know what? They cost what they cost. I haven't priced them out lately, so I really don't know. But anyways, that's what it may come down to. So, lots of talking, right? But, you know, in this type of a video where I'm bringing a customer up to speed, that's, that's the nature of the beast. And uh, that's why these videos aren't for everybody. So, aside from that... Um, you know, I want to first get these uh, controls situated because I'm not going to start um, moving into that phase where I'm going through and function testing more in depth. You know, I could be chasing my tail if I have several potentiometers that are so bad that, you know, they're, they're bringing about problems, okay? And uh, that's why I like to get all the controls squared away, cleaned up, go through and uh, ohm out the, the controls and make sure, you know, again, like I always say with, a, with an analog meter and watch that needle transitioning smoothly through the range of the, uh, of the uh, VR, okay? They shouldn't be, you know, jumpy or hitting any dead spots and dropping out and all that. I've explained this before. So, I expect smooth function from all of these VRs, switches, and so forth before I get into function testing because, again, I don't want, you know, a funky uh, VR or switch to be the reason why I'm uh, experiencing, uh, you know, intermittent signals and uh, noise and all that crap. 
So um, apparently it's going to take a bit of time to go through and resolve these controls because they're in really rough shape. And um, also too, you can see over here, I think this is that switch that got broken uh, during um, transport, during shipping to me. So I need to get this uh, switch replaced. I haven't even uh, you know, removed this section yet and checked these controls. As far as the, the uh, key bed, keyboard and all that, um, I do have that. The uh, the contacts, you know, the bus, you know, the bus bar and the and the various uh, spring contacts in here don't look too bad. There's a lot of gunk in here, fuzz and crap, and you know all that. You know, things are things are pretty pretty dirty. But other than that, uh, thank goodness there doesn't appear to be a bunch of corrosion on here. There's a little bit, a little bit of tarnish. I can see it and. Uh, you know, but but as far as where the uh, contacts uh, make contact with the bus bar and all that, everything looks pretty good. If I go through with just a a small little uh, brush and some solvent, I can get these cleaned up okay. Um, you know, again, I will examine the underside, check these traces. From what I can see, just off the bat, everything looks good there. As far as the uh, individual notes I don't really yeah I don't really feel anything uh, problematic there there doesn't seem to be any uh, you know any problems with movement or anything like that they all seem to be nice and springy and all that and uh, there doesn't appear to be any obstructions anything obstructing any of these notes from you know being pressed in other words, now let me get these boards just turned back over here, and um, like so, and get these uh, peeled back a little bit. When you're doing a big massive flushing, you don't want all that crap getting all over everything else, so you do need to be mindful of that and set up some, uh, some rags or whatever you, you have to absorb all that nastiness. One thing that I want to mention, and it's really important for the customer to understand what's happening here, is at the very least, this power supply needs to be uh, uh, freshened up a bit. There's only like six caps. There's these three filters, and, there, and there's a couple, I think a couple other uh, little uh, lytics here. There's these two, and then there's one tucked uh, behind there. So, you know, that that should be done right off the bat. Get rid of these electrolytics. If that if something was to short out on this board really bad, one of these caps was to really uh, really fail catastrophically, you can end up causing some very expensive damage. And as far as a full electrolytic recap on all the boards, well, you know, um, I would recommend it, but you know, the more work I put into this thing, you know, two and two equals four, right? Uh, the price is going to go up and this is a unit that when when slash if I get into the uh, electrical adjustment phase there is a lot involved in uh, the electrical adjustment um, in a previous video I demonstrated some of that on another Juno 60 and it's a process it takes time and again time equates to uh, what money you can see there's a lot of uh there's a lot of these little trim pots everywhere you know a lot of trim pots on the uh, control boards let me bring these back into view here and just set them there carefully Never in a hurry to damage anything, okay? Very lightly. But you can see, yeah, there's there are little trim pots all over the boards. Pardon me, I had to swap out the battery, but like I was saying, there's a lot of little uh, trim pots all over the place that are involved in the electrical adjustment of this unit. And if you want to 
if you want it done right, all that has to be done or at the very least uh, looked into. Um, you know, clipping on test points, checking things out on test equipment, all that. Doing what needs to be done to bring this uh, electrically back to factory spec. And that's if there isn't any problems that inhibit uh, any um, adjustments. And, uh, but otherwise, um, I know the customer had this powered up. He was playing around with it. And I think that he mentioned to me that um, uh, he was having some issue with uh, pulling up some of the presets, you know, in the banks there. And I don't know what's going on there. Um, you know, I am going to swap out the, uh, the battery on the back of the board, but as far as, um, you know, any uh, memory issues otherwise, and, you know, until I start peeling back the layers, I'm not really going to know. And I'm not going to start doing that until, like I said, I get all of these controls um, working the way that they have to be working so I can be assured that they're not causing any problems with any of the uh, signals that they're passing and, and regulating and so forth and so on. I, I don't want any of that in the equation. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do that first before I uh, perform a safe power up. And even though he had this powered up before and he didn't have any problems, I'm going to be sure that I perform a safe power up, that I leave it um, on the current limiter for, for quite some time to allow, um, you know, caps to, uh, you know, reform, uh, being that this was stored uh, in a really, really bad environment for, for many years. Um, I want to let, you know, these electrolytics especially kind of reform for a while and all that. So, anyways, because if something was to fail catastrophically on, on one of these uh, boards, even, even these smaller caps, if something was to just dead short and all that and knock out some, uh, you know, integrated circuits that are not easy to source, you know, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Russian roulette. You just never know when, uh, you know, when you're going to get that bullet. So, um, so that's that. But anyways, um, also to back to the electrical adjustment aspect, you know, it's, you know, it takes more than a, than a few minutes. You know, there's a lot involved there. It takes time. It's just a lot of service time involved. A lot of times you have to, you know, reload the uh, factory presets that involves some cassette tapes and you got to, you know, patch a cable in the back. Uh, sometimes when you're doing that, um, sometimes it doesn't take the uh, signal level has to, you know, that's uh, coming out of those cassettes and I have them, but, um, the signal level has to be just right. If it's a little too hot or a little too lean, sometimes, you know, the synth will reject the attempt to um, reload those uh, presets, you know, into the synth. So sometimes that could get a little bit touchy, but when you get the sweet spot, you get it just right, then you can uh, reload uh, factory presets into this thing. So I'm just going to leave it at this because this video is long enough. A whole lot of talking, I understand. And like I always say, guys, uh, peace, love, music, and the vintage audio that brings it to your ears. Till next time. This is a poor man's shoe production.